Hello everybody. This week I finally have something a little bit newer that we can work on. This is a Fusion Lapbook A90B Plus Pro. It says it's got Intel inside. So given that they're being a little bit discreet about what processor it is, we can assume that it's not the i9. So what's happening with this? Well, I have it plugged in, I press the power button and nothing at all happens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pictures of the motherboard and we're gonna take it straight to the screen. And this is our motherboard. So I'm just gonna have a quick look over it with you guys and see if there are any signs of damage. I'm not seeing anything here at all. As usual, if you see anything wrong that I miss, please post in the comments down underneath. The only thing I spotted was a small bit of dirt in this here, but that's just dirt in case anybody spots it. I think what we're gonna do here is we're gonna plug in our DC power adapter here. This 12 volts comes in through this little barrel jack here. And I'm gonna follow that as it goes into our motherboard and see if we can work out what's wrong. Before taking the voltage measurements, let's just quickly follow the path that our 12 volts should take into this motherboard. Well, this is our DC jack where our 12 volts comes in. It hits the motherboard here and follow this track down to our two inductors here. So it should come through these inductors and onto the drain pins of our first MOSFET right here. It should come through this MOSFET onto our second MOSFET and then through our second MOSFET to here from where it goes probably to a current sense resistor somewhere else on the board. But to start off with, I want to see that we're getting 12 volts here. So let's do that now. So let's start taking some voltage measurements. So I introduced my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range. I introduced my black probe and I place it to ground and we can start taking some measurements with my red probe. So the first place we want to measure is we have our 12 volt adapter plugged into our DC jack and we want to make sure that we're getting 12 volts to this point here. So I place my probe here and we measure 12.1 volts on the input. So that tells me that my DC power adapter is good and my DC input jack is good. So following along we have our two inductors here so I want to make sure that my 12 volts is making it through these two inductors and onto the drain pins of the first MOSFET. So I'm going to measure that from here. So I place my red probe to the drain pins of the first MOSFET and I measure 12.1 volts. So we're getting our 12.1 volts to the pins of the first MOSFET. Now, if everything is good, I would expect to find that our 12.1 volts makes it from our drain pins through to our source pins on either side. So I place my probe to the source pins on either side of the MOSFET, but here I measure 4.09 volts. So that seems wrong to me. As my final test of the input section, I just want to measure the voltage after the second MOSFET. So I place my probe to the drain pins of this MOSFET and I find that there is 4.09 volts here also. So let's do a quick review. We're measuring 12.1 volts at this point right here where the DC input jack connects to the motherboard. So that tells me that my power adapter is good and my DC input jack is good. We're also measuring 12.1 at this side of the inductors and we're measuring 12.1 volts on the other side of the inductor right here on the drain pins of our first MOSFET. However, we are measuring 4.09 volts on the other side of the first MOSFET, which doesn't seem right, and also 4.09 volts on the other side of the second MOSFET, which also doesn't seem right. I did take measurements at the gate and the gates are both measuring 4.17 volts. So what's going wrong here? What should we try next? Well, follow with me and you'll see what I do next. What I want to do next is to check for shorts at the input section. So I introduce my multimeter in diode mode. Uh, I plug out the power completely. You can see my DC jack is removed here and I place my red probe to ground. I'm going to start taking some measurements with my black probe. So the first place I want to measure is across these inductors and on the first MOSFET. So I know we've got 12.1 volts here, so I think we're good, but I'm just going to place my probe to the drain pins right here and I find that we measure 0 0.653. So that's fine. There's no short there.
I want to measure after the first MOSFET so we'll place our probe and into any of the pins in here so I place my probe here and I find that we're measuring 0 0.700 so that's also not shorted next I want to measure after the second MOSFET so I place my black probe to my drain pin of my second MOSFET and I measure 0 0.690 so we have no short on the main power rail either and next I just wanted to check and see if either of the first two MOSFETs were shorted and what I found was when I placed my red probe to the source pins of the first MOSFET and my black probe to the drain pins I measured 0 0.550 so that's fine the first MOSFET appears to be fine the next check I wanted to do was just to check the second MOSFET and see if that was shorted. So I placed my red probe to the source pins, my black probe to the drain pins and when I measured that I measured 0 0.004. So it looked like that was shorted. I swapped the pins round and I also measured the same. So it appears that our second MOSFET is shorted. So I decided to take that MOSFET off the board and check it off the board just to confirm a short. And this is a video of me removing that MOSFET from the motherboard. It's actually quite difficult to do with the camera in the way. But I just heated it up slowly, got the tweezers at it, and pulled it off. Eventually it comes off. And there it is. And this is my 7466 MOSFET. Hopefully you can see it there. I've removed it and I need to flip it over and do a continuity check on it. So let's check. So with my multimeter in continuity mode, I'm placing one probe to my drain pins and the other to my source pin. And as you can hear, that MOSFET is shorted. So we need to replace it. Now that MOSFET that we just removed and found to be shorted was an Aeon 7466 30V N channel MOSFET. I couldn't find one of these on a spare board, however I did find an Aeon 7200 30V N channel MOSFET. What I wanted to do was just compare these values and see if this is an equivalent. So I just compared the drain to source voltage 30 volts, drain to source voltage 30 volts, the continuous drain current 30 amps, continuous drain current 40 amps. So I think as long as it's, uh, if it can handle a greater current then it'll, if it can handle 40 then it can certainly handle 30. And the other parameters are comparable as well. So I soldered on my 7200 onto the board and we're going to plug it in. When I plugged in the motherboard I decided to take the voltage around the input section once again and this is what I found. So having replaced that second MOSFET, I've replaced the shorted 7466 with a good 7400 and when I did that I measured 12.1 on the input, I measured 12.1 on the input to the first MOSFET, I measured 12.1 volts between the two MOSFETs and 12.1 volts uh, after the second MOSFET. So that seems like that is correct. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug it in and see if the motherboard comes to life when I press the power button. Okay, I've replaced that dodgy MOSFET and I've put the motherboard back into the laptop. And as you can see, we now have a red LED by the side of where the power adapter comes in. So hopefully that means that we're good to go. I'm going to try and power it on now. The power button is on the keyboard, so it's pretty awkward to try and film this, but I'm pretty confident that when we press this button, we're going to find that it powers on. Um, let me try it again. Oh dear, looks like we have a secondary fault. So unfortunately that means we're back to troubleshooting again. Well where were we when we were troubleshooting the last time? We had tracked our 12.1 volts from our DC input jack across these two inductors, across the first MOSFET and the second MOSFET and we were seeing 12.1 here. Now there was no indication really as to where this goes next and I've no schematic. All that we can see here is there are six vias but if we check the other side of the board there is literally nothing on the other side of the board. So where does it go? Well one way that I have found 
that helps when you're trying to find the next component is to locate the battery charge controller IC and if you look at this board we can see there is an IC up way up on the other side of the board called BQ715 now I know this from previous boards we've worked on that this is a battery charge controller so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the data sheet for this and see if it helps us work out where the 12.1 volts should be going after the two MOSFETs this is the data sheet for a BQ24715. For some reason, when they write the number on the, the IC, they drop the 24. So this is a battery charge controller. And as we can see from the sample circuit here, our adapter comes in. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. Yeah, let me zoom in on that. Our adapter comes in here to one MOSFET, then a second MOSFET, and then that goes to a current sense resistor. Now that current sense resistor is connected to two pins that are marked on this as being let's see it here I'll zoom back out again ACN and ACP so ACN is the input current sense resistor negative input ACP is the input current sense resistor positive output because we need to measure before and after the current sense resistor so here's ACP and ACN so we need to see where those go and then we can identify the current sense resistor from there I've drawn in those pins just to help everybody out here and help you see what's going on. So let me draw those in. Now as you can see, we've got ACN and ACP, which are the two pins that we're looking for. And if you watch closely, you can see the two lines coming from those. And where do they go? They go up to here. So this is the current sense resistor after the two MOSFETs. Let's just take a look at that again. So we've already seen our two MOSFETs, we know we've 12.1 volts after the second MOSFET and this is the next component in line, this is the current sense resistor. So as you can see that then goes on to this IC which corresponds to these two MOSFETs right here. I checked out this and this is actually a dual MOSFET. So this IC corresponds to these two here and this inductor corresponds to this inductor. And then we have a second current sense resistor that goes to our battery. These are pins of our battery out here. And this is our main system voltage right here. So see how easy looking up the battery controller data sheet can make this. Because it would be difficult if you didn't know where to go next. I'm sure you could just use diode mode or continuity mode and work it out. But this just makes things so much easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for voltages. I'm going to check and see that we have a system voltage here and just see what other voltages are coming online. I measured 8.4 volts on this inductor that is on the rail that is called system voltage. I also plugged in our battery and I charged it from 7 volts up to 8.4 volts. So that part of the circuit appears to be working as well. There was 3.3 volts on this inductor right here so I think our 3.3 volts always on is working fine there was nothing on this but I think this may only be available when the laptop is powered on and I measured 5.15 volts here now on the keyboard our power button is on the keyboard which is connected to this connector right here I measured 3.1 volts on a number of pins here and I was just about to try and check the power button to make sure that you know one of the 3.3 volts was going to zero when I noticed a particular section of the board was warming up right here so what I decided to do was just douse that in a bit of flux and see if I could flush out which component was heating up I've doused that component in a bit of flux and the surrounding components just in case it's a dodgy capacitor which would be you know a better result so when I power it on this is what happens you can see the flux starting to evaporate now it's not absolutely conclusive here. I think what I'm going to do is try a bit of lighter fluid and see if that gives me a better indication because I know that questions come up a lot, you know, why use flux instead of lighter fluid. So let's try a bit of lighter fluid instead. So let's try that experiment once again, this time with lighter fluid. So what we're looking for here is which component burns off the lighter fluid the quickest and that is likely to be the one component that is shorted. So let me introduce the lighter fluid. The board is still plugged in. Okay, so which component is burning off the lighter fluid first? 
the only one I can see is that IC itself. Now that IC is an A. LC269, a high definition audio codec with embedded class D speaker amplifier. So is that blown? Let me try it one more time. I just want to make sure it's not one of the capacitors that's short at the ground. Can you spot one of the capacitors that is burning off the lighter fluid more quickly than the IC itself? If you do, please post in the comments below. So what's the next step in this scenario, guys? We found a blown MOSFET, I've replaced that and that brings our main power rail back online. However, we have this IC heating up. Um, I'm not sure if I have one of these spare, but it seems like this needs to be replaced as well. Where do we go next with this? Please post in the comments down below and I'll pick it up again next week.